Okay, in this video we're going to look at a solution to question B1 from the 2012 Putnam exam. So let's look at it. So let's let s be a class of functions from 0 infinity to 0 infinity such that we have the following characteristics. F1, which is e to the x minus 1, is an element of s. F2, which is the natural log of the quantity x plus 1, is an s. And then we have this rule that says that if f and g are in s, then their sum is in s, their composition is in s, and then further, if we know that f is bigger than g, their difference is also an s. Notice we need this ordering to maintain the fact that the codomain is 0 to infinity. Okay, so now our goal is to show that if f and g are in s, then their product is in s. So let's do some exploration. And we're going to start off using a really important problem solving technique, which is to simplify the problem a little bit and see if we can come up with a solution. So I want to simplify the problem by instead of considering F1 and F2 as given, let's make them a little bit nicer. So let's let F1 of X be e to the X and let's let F2 of X be just the natural log of X. And now notice, by composing these in the right way, we can turn a sum into a product. So let's take e to the natural log of f of x plus the natural log of g of x. So notice, if we started off with f and g in s, then the natural log of f of x is in s, the natural log of g of x is in s also, but then their sum is an s by um, this rule right here, and then we compose that inside f1, and we get something in s. So now let's see, no notice that this is e to the natural log of f of x times e to the natural log of g of x, but that's exactly equal to f of x times g of x. Now, of course, this doesn't solve the problem because we've um, simplified F1 and F2, but this should give us some motivation for how to play around with these characteristics of our set in order to arrive at the point where we get the product of two functions inside the set. Notice the important part here is that this nice composition of the exponential and the logarithm function allows us to turn a sum into a product. Okay, good. I'll clean up the board and then we'll look at the real solution. Okay, so now that we've looked at a simplified version of the solution, let's look at the real solution. So let's suppose that f of x and g of x are in s, and now we're going to apply these characteristics of s to continually get new functions in s until we have f times g is in s. So notice this implies that f2 of f of x which is equal to the natural log of f of x plus 1 and f2 of g of x, which is equal to the natural log of g of x plus 1. It tells us that both of those are in s. And notice that is by uh, number 2. Great. But now we can uh, apply 2 again um, to get the sum of these two functions is in S. So in other words, we have the natural log of f of x plus 1 plus the natural log of g of x plus 1 is in S. And then again, that's by another portion of part 2, this one right here. Now we can stick both of those, or sorry, stick that sum inside of F1. So let's do that. Let's maybe call this H of X just for simplification. And notice that tells us that E to the H of X minus 1 is an S. But now that's going to be exactly equal to E to the natural log of F of X plus 1 plus natural log of g of x plus 1. But now I can use exponent rules to turn that sum inside the exponent into a product. So that's going to be e to the natural log of f of x plus 1 times e to the natural log of g of x plus 1 minus 1. And so that's all in s. So that's exactly e to the h of x minus 1 where we defined h of x up here.
Okay, fantastic. Now we can let the exponential and the logarithmic function cancel each other, and that gives us f of x plus one times g of x plus one minus one is an element of s. But now that's exactly equal to f of x times g of x plus f of x plus g of x which is an element of s. Now finally what we can do is we can subtract f of x plus g of x from this and notice that this function right here is most definitely bigger than the sum of f of x plus g of x. So we can subtract f of x plus g of x, which we know is in s by this part right here, and that's going to give us f of x times g of x in s because we just subtracted two things from s. Okay, good, so we've arrived at our solution. Okay, so one thing I wanna do is clean up the board and then write this all in one step just as a nice visualization of the solution through these rules. Okay, I'll clean up the board and then we'll look at that. Okay, so just as a summary of what we just did, so again, if we suppose that f and g are in s, notice that we can put all of those steps that we did on the last board together into one line which says that the product f times g equals the function f1 composed with the function f2 of f of x plus f2 of g of x minus the sum of f and g of x. So, and that's given that f1 and f2 are these, and we know that this quantity on the right hand side is inside the set S because of all of this stuff from part two. Okay, good. So I think it's nice to see it in one line. Um, and that's the end of the solution and the end of the video.